Good morning, good morning. This is Reverend Nelson Yancey White with Yancey Family Ministries. So glad to be with you another blessed Saturday morning for this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Why? Because he is great and mighty. I want to start my good morning shout out starting with my loving husband, Reverend Johnny M. White, Senior Pastor of Olive Grove Missionary Baptist Church, and good morning to our church family. Also, good morning to my honoree sponsors, Brother Larry Downey and his lovely wife, Linda. Oh, Brother Larry Downey wants me to let you know that on August the 18th at 2 p.m. they will be celebrating the 13th pastoral anniversary of Reverend Terry Taylor. He is the pastor of Faith Temple Deliverance Baptist Church and this will be held at Greater New Hope Missionary Baptist Church which is at 515 Raleigh Street right here in Oxford. And also he wants you to know that he is hosting a rally for democracy at First Baptist Church in Oxford, which is at 320 Granville Street, and that's going to be held on September the 15th at 4 p.m. Oh, he's inviting you to come to these things and be a part of And I tell you, we say happy anniversary to Pastor Terry Taylor, and we should always celebrate those who's helped making a difference in the kingdom work. Amen. And as we do be about our father's business. So congratulations to him and his church family, and y'all love on him real good. Amen. I want to get into the word today. I'm still in Matthew, the 16th chapter. Wait a minute. Don't turn me off. Stay with me, please. I'm in Matthew, the 16th chapter. I want to read five verses here and talk about them. I'm going to read verse 21, 24, 25, and 26, and 27, if you have your word with me. And the word of God reads, From that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Verse 24, then Jesus said unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow Mean. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is it a man profiteth if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Amen. That's the word. And I want to use as a subject today. I know I've already talked about this, but how many know you can get more than one revelations out of the sermon, out of the word? Amen. So I want to use as a subject today that this is not for nothing. Amen. This is not for nothing. In other words, it's not in vain. That's good news right there. That's encouraging that this is not for nothing. It's not in vain. And I want to use also and talk a little bit about with these scriptures that there is a plan and there is a process. I just think these verses here, this is what Jesus is saying. There is a plan and there's a process. Um, He's going to rise again. He has to die and there's a process for that. And then he went into our process that um, if we're going to follow him, there's something we have to do. We have to deny ourselves, take up the cross. And if we want to lose our life, um, those who's trying to save it, is going to lose it. Amen. But I'm going to, I'm not going to get too ahead of myself, but those are two things. It's not for nothing. Those decisions that we're making for the work of the Lord, for Christ's sake, it's not for nothing. It's not in vain. And I was looking at everything on social media and so many people are talking now about the latest thing that's developing, um, in the household of faith and in politics and 
And there's so much before us and everybody's looking at what everybody else is doing, but we're not spending enough time looking at our own selves. But I want to use this message as an encouraging message that this is not for nothing. Amen. Not in vain. These things that we're doing for kingdom work, following Christ, um, deny ourselves is not for nothing. And I look back at my life and I said, you know, and I looked at the saints that I am surrounded by and have been around and have encouraged me that the sacrifices that we have made, the things we have given up for ministry is not for nothing. Amen. It's not in vain. All those sacrifices are for the ministry, the things that we have to walked away from and denied ourselves is not for nothing. And how many know in every day and throughout every day um, that we have to make some decisions in our lives? Amen. We're always faced with something in our jobs, in our spiritual walk, in our finances and relationships. We're always faced with something. We have to make decisions. And, and I've come to myself and I look at my own life and, and sometimes with those hard decisions, I have to decide for myself what kind of woman I want to be. Amen. Um, who do I want to be? Um, and I asked myself, so am I, after my, ask myself a question, am I a child of God? And if the answer to that is yes, then my choices and my decisions, um, the choices that I have become fewer. Amen. Um, I remember my, remember my pastor preaching once and he used the phrase multiple choices. Um, and I think we think we have that. Um, we have option one, two, three, and four, option A, B, C, and D. Um, but if you are a child of God, those options are not as many as the world. Amen. Um, the word narrows us down to a certain path to walk. Amen. A, a narrow way for us to find. Hallelujah. Um, um, but I want to encourage us. Um, every day you have to make up in your mind, regardless what's going on around us, what kind of man or what kind of woman do I want to be? Um, am I exhibiting a child of God in my decisions? Amen. In every decision in life, as we all know from these scriptures, it comes with a sacrifice. Amen. So often we think we can have our cake and eat it too. Um, we can have it all, and that is not true. We cannot have it all. For right here in verse 26, it says, For what is a man profiteth if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Uh, I see four words here. I see the word profit and gain and lost and exchange. Um, tell me I can't have it all because with every decision that I make, I'm going to lose something. Um, I got to realize that when I'm gaining, I'm actually doing an exchange change as something that I'm losing in my decision. Amen. And I pray that we realize that we're going to lose and we're going to lose sin. Amen. And in exchange for our souls, that we're going to, we're going to gain the things of the Lord. Amen. The things of heaven and the things that belong to the household of faith. Um, as we lose sin, as we give up and deny ourselves, uh, we can't have it all. Again, I can, we can't have our cake and eat it too. Come on, we're straddling the fence. Uh, we think we can have this, that, and the other, not realizing that we've made an exchange. Amen. Um, that we're losing something that we have become oblivious to. Um, that the enemy is stealing from us. Uh, it says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And I think he's robbing us blind. Amen. And we think we have obtained life and you yet to find it. I don't want to get ahead of myself, um, but I just want us to know that we're not gaining as much as we think we're gaining. We're actually, there's an exchange that's going on, amen, in our decision making. And again, I pray that we're exchanging our soul 
by giving up sin. Amen. That's what we're gaining the things of Christ. And so as we choose, uh, we got to make the right choices. Amen. That's just, that stuck with me when the pastor said we operate like we got multiple choices here. Oh, uh, You got more choices than you think you have. If you heaven is what you're trying to gain. Amen. And so as I made the choice, we got to make that the choice. And I've made that choice. I have decided to follow Jesus. Amen. The world behind me and the cross before me. And I choose to decrease that he may increase. Amen. Verse 24. I'm going to read it again. Then he said, Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Amen. We got to make that choice to follow Christ, to lose my life for his sake. Amen. That they kept ministering to me. And I want to read verse 25. Listen to this. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. And I sit right there with find it. And I started telling the Lord, thank you. Because clearly there is something to find. Amen. Shall find find it. Um, I, I got a little deeper with myself. I said, clearly, um, what are you trying to say? I think he's trying to tell us, and I know he's trying to tell us that there's more to us than what we see. Amen. And then I said, there's more to my life than I can ever imagine. Thank you, God, because he does exceedingly and abundantly above. Hallelujah. But there's something to find, and we go through life like we find it. Um, I talk to people all the time and I say, how you doing? And they say, I'm living my best life. And sometimes I think it's great to hear it. It's great to say it and make you feel good. But I think we need to examine that thing. Am I living my best life? Hallelujah. Is there something that's yet to find? Hallelujah. I can find it. If I lose my life for his sake, I shall find find it. There is something to find. There is more to the life I'm living. And help me, Holy Ghost, I'm going to follow Christ because I believe there's more that he has in store for me. Hallelujah. I've yet to find it all. I have not arrived. Thank you, God. And I reminded myself that as I was looking at everything that was going on and people, what people were saying, about other people's lives. And I was like, you know what? It is not easy out here. There is a plan and there is a process. Uh, we know the plan, but we don't want to get with the process. Hallelujah. We don't want to give up nothing. Um, we've been told we can have it all. And we live in this illusion life uh, for the world, for the prince of this world has given us an illusion of a life that we think we have, that we're yet to find. Thank you, God. And I just love the Lord because he keeps on revealing to us that you've not yet arrived. For I tell you, those of us that is laying it down our lives every day, those of us that are going through, those that are willing to go through the process. Thank you, God. We know the plan that he has for us, but there is a process. And I thank God that I sometime I get a little weary and well doing and, and the devil is working on me. But then again, I gird myself up and I say that I'm going to keep on keeping on. I know it gets hard sometimes, but this is not for nothing. Thank you, God. This is not in vain, for I will follow him. Hallelujah. I will seek after what he has for me. Hallelujah. There is more to find. I'm finding my purpose. Hallelujah. I'm finding strength. I'm finding more power than I've ever dreamed. I am finding joy. I am finding everlasting life for the reward that he has promised me. For when he comes in his glory with his angels, he shall reward everything. 
every man according to his works. I want to encourage everyone that's tuned in down today that you keep on keeping on. I know it has not been easy and I know it seems like everybody else is living the life. Hallelujah. But it's an illusion because when Christ cracked the sky, hallelujah, I'm going to be ready. I will be rewarded for the sacrifices. I'm going to continue to seek him to find the life that he's promised me, a life of abundance, hallelujah, a life, eternal life in the heavens. I will reign with him. Hallelujah. I'm just excited about what I'm yet to find. Thank you all for tuning in today and for spending time with me. And remember today and throughout every day to rejoice and be glad. Why? God loves you.